Thanks, GM everyone. So I'm going to introduce some of the advancements we have been doing at Magblock and some of the challenges along the way on bringing real time on chain. Let's go back to where we started. It was a bear market. We were building fully on chain games, trying to push the boundaries of multiplayer games that can be built fully on chain. So all the state and state transition happening on Solana. Uh, we built SDK, API for gas abstraction, session keys for auto approval, um, everything that will fill the user a natural experience. But no matter what, there is one limiting factor, which is end to end latency. Just to give some numbers, hyper-competitive games require latency below 30 milliseconds to be playable. Uh, most games are good in the range between 30 and 60 milliseconds, and anything above that degrades the user experience. Um, therefore, we ask ourselves, how can we have real times with the benefit of staying on our loved global state machine? The answer, FMR rollups. High level, they rely on some unique properties of uh, the SVM, uh, which are transaction declare up front all the state that is being written and written. Um, all transactions that don't compete on rights can be executed in parallel, and there is a very clear separation between the logic, the smart contract, and the state. All these properties put together, they allow for this unique construction, which is called ephemeral rollups. High level, how it works is that you still deploy your smart contract, you still create your state on Solana, and then at some point you can delegate accounts. These accounts could be PDAs or on curve accounts by interacting with the delegation program. This delegation program is the entry point, it takes control over your accounts, and then it proposes SVM instances that we can uh, run just in time. We can spin up on demand close to the user that will start processing your transactions. And at some point here, we can operate uh, with low latency. At some point, we are going to commit the state, and eventually, we're going to undelegate these accounts and delegate and bring them back to normal usable state on Solana. Main benefits, we get real time, because we can um, create these machines on the edge very close to the user, so below 50 milliseconds end to end globally. They are still composable. All the smart contracts are not going anywhere else. They are still deployed on Solana. State is originating on Solana, and you're only temporarily delegating this account in these ephemeral on times. It's scalable. You can spin up as many instances as you want horizontally. And it's also customizable. Um, since it's uh, runtime, as I mentioned, like we spin up them on demand. You can also add plugins and extension. Just to name a few uh, examples of this, we have a building crank, which you can combine with a high precision clock. And whenever you combine these two primitives, you can think of having a physics engine directly within the SVM that brings forward the state of your games. Or it could be a limit order that gets triggered whenever the price of sold reaches certain targets. Oracle, that works extremely well when paired with an ephemeral rollups. You can collocate the machine, and some examples of these are verifiable random function or AI Oracle. Um, you can interact with the smart contract request, uh, the API from an LLM, and then the, the, the callback is going to your smart contracts. Fees, super important. You can customize fees, you can abstract the fees, or you can allow the user to pay um, with your project token. Um, and lastly, um, another super important primitive is price feed. Uh, we can ingest with super low latency um, Oracle data such as PIF laser and having fine grain, uh, super low latency, precise financial uh, data that you can use to build your products. Now, how it works, I'm going to uh, switch to demo. And here is the mother of all the tutorials, accounters, smart contracts. Uh, here I'm going to. Uh, in the in the top right, register and watch the account on Solana. And on the bottom right, I'm going to register to the WebSocket update uh, for this account to the RPC uh, of the ephemeral rollups. So here I'm uh, incrementing the counter. So our smart contract has a PDA that stores the, the value of this counter. And here I can just run a regular transaction to increment it. At some point, I can delegate. The delegation is bringing this account in the ephemeral rollups. And as you can see, What's changing is that the owner's now delegation program state is still the same. Uh, here, I can now run the same increment transaction. And here, I can run transaction real time, real quick. I'm actually not able to click as fast as transactions are being processed. And you can see here that all the updates are coming through the WebSocket. At some point, whenever I want, I can either commit or commit and delegate. So in this case, I undelegate. I bring it back to normal state. And as you can see, the owner gets reverted to whatever it was originally before the delegation state is finalized. And that's how it works. This is the general primitive. And you can imagine that you can build pretty much anything uh, with it. Now, let's go back to presentation. And I'm going to talk about some of the challenges. Um, the first one is how we sync state with mainnet. Uh, there are broadly two categories of accounts. The uh, first one are non-delegated accounts that are virtually any account on Solana. 
including programs, PDA, and or curve. The way it works is that the first time a transaction reach an ephemeral rollup uh, endpoint is um, we are detecting which account is being used, and if it's missing, we are cloning it just in time before executing the transaction. From this point on, these accounts are also added to a set of monitored accounts, and whenever there is state changing on Solana, this state is also applied in ephemeral rollups, and which means that all the programs, all the smart contracts are able to read all this data transparently as they will be uh, doing on Solana. The other category are delegated accounts. These, as the name suggests, are accounts that went through a delegation step. Those are the accounts that can be written in the ephemeral rollups. They are also cloned just in time, same mechanics. But we also uh, do the uh, trick of inverting the ownership, as I showed before. We invert in the ephemeral rollups the owner to be whatever a program was originally before the delegation. And this essentially allows us to reduce all the logic of the smart contract, which will now work in the ephemeral rollups and will essentially act as a lock mainnet. And a delegation is the other way around. Now, some challenges for delegating an account are how we delegate, how we commit, how we finalize state. How we delegate, super simple. It's just a few magic lines that you are to your smart contract, Anchor, Native, uh, Pinocchio, you name it. You just have to call um, the delegation program. If it's a PDA with invoke sign, you sign with your seed. And then the, F um, the delegation program is going to be the owner. If it's an on-curve account, you're signing and then calling the programs. This is also programmatic, which means that it's part of your smart contract logic. You can also, um, for example, specify that if an instruction is executed with a frequency that exceeds a given threshold, you're delegating. Otherwise, you're just executing it on Solana. So this gives you full control. Now, how we commit state? Uh, two ways. First one, uh, quite simple, a frequency specif specified upon delegation that the validator will use and commit state uh, back on Solana with this given frequency. Second, is actually way more interesting, and turns out that almost all the smart contracts um, knows when it's time to commit. If it's a game and you're updating the position of your player, you know when the player finds a jam and you want to mint an NFT on Solana because that's part of your logic. If um, you want to update a position on an exchange, if you want to CPI into another program, so if you want to mint a token, if you want to do a swap, you know when it's time to use that state. So we have two primitives. There are uh, commits accounts and commits and delegate. Commit is essentially allowing you to specify, specify a bundle of accounts that are committed atomically. The validator will prepare this bundle and then pre-upload and commit it together. Uh, commit and delegate, same thing, but it will also apply the undelegation, which means it is committing state and then reverting back the owner to be the original owner. Another very common use case is uh, bundles, how you uh, use state that is in the ephemeral rollups to do something on mainnet. So we have this powerful API that allows you essentially to do uh, is a superset of commit and commit and delegate, but also allow you to specify mainnet instructions. It could be a transfer, it could be a CPI, it could be anything. What it's doing here is that you are creating your bundle, you are telling the validator, OK, commit this state and then do these transactions. Uh, what the validator does it's use different strategy depending on the number of accounts, depending on the size of the account. We'll use lookup table, pre-upload buffer. But the important thing is that everything gets uploaded on Solana, pre-uploaded, and then it will be executed all at once. So all the instructions are going to be committed and executed all together or not at all atomically. We have been talking about committing, how we finalize state. This is actually a very complex problem. How do you make sure that uh, the ephemeral validator is not committing something wrong? Um, high level, the way it works yet is that the ephemeral validator will at some point commit state in a temporary PDA on Solana. Anyone is allowed to challenge this state. Uh, we have a version of a fraud proof mechanism that we call dynamic fraud proof that starts with a very short challenge windows. And then uh, we rely on the assumption that there are challengers that are actively interacting with the protocol, saying that they are not raising the challenge. And if we don't meet the requirements, if we don't meet the requirement of uh, n number of uh, these challengers, we essentially expand exponentially these challenge windows. What happens when someone raises a challenge? Everything stops. Everything stops, and then we go into the dispute game, which essentially need to decide who is wrong and who is right. Um, this, is complex. this is, again, another complex game. How we do it is with a bisection game, we isolate a batch of transactions that are responsible for the, for, uh, for the fraud, and then we run it in a ZK SVM. When eventually a ZK SVM will be um, fast enough to prove several thousand transactions in real time, we can switch to full proving. And this can also depend on the use case. You can imagine a game a fewer a security constraint compared to a financial application where it could require a full mathematical proof of the full session.
there is, this, there is a paper called Dynamic Crawl Proof, which will add more in details all this architecture. So if you're interested, go read it. Where we are at, phase one is really live. Uh, we are live on mainnet that our protocol using us uh, with a set of nodes that we operate. Phase two, uh, we're shipping it end of Q2, uh, where uh, we're still going to run most of the nodes, but third party are going to allow to run their own ephemeral roll instances with some staking requirements. And um, end of the year, we're essentially moving to a permissionless version where anyone will be able to run their own ephemeral roll session, and this required for fraud proof to be implemented and in place. Some other challenges, how we achieve uh, low latency uh, globally. Uh, here, RPC router has a very important role. So the first function of this router is a huge improvement over the DevX. The router can essentially direct transaction either to Solana or to one of the ephemeral rollup instances. And therefore, you, with a single endpoint, you can basically interact with this network, it abstract transparently everything. Secondly, it also keeps a ping to all the available machines, all the location. Every router is going to ping all the available machine to know which machine is closer to him. And these machines are also deployed on the edge closer to the user. So we're going to load balance all this router. The user, what's happening is that the user talks to the closer router, the router directs him to the closer machine. And this allows us to have low latency everywhere. You can imagine that there's another function if a user in Asia is uh, delegating an account to a validator there, and I'm in the US, I want to write to that account, I can uh, basically use sticky sessions. So the router keeps track of all the delegation. There is a delegation record on mainnet that have information about the validator, load balance, trust score, and it will essentially also uh, do their sticky session where my transaction is going there. Another super interesting use case for some ephemeral rollups are permissioned environments. This is one of the latest features that we have added, and it's essentially very similar to an access control uh, layer similar to a Unix file system. So your smart contract can uh, decide which user, which groups are allowed to access a specific account, and then these rules are enforced by a guard layer on top of the RPC of your ephemeral rollup systems. Um, this can also be combined with uh, other additional checks. It could be a KYC, it could be your company authentication, it could be any uh, policy compliance layer that you want to add on top. And plus, uh, we're experimenting with running ephemeral rollup instances in a TE, in an Intel TDX, where essentially you can get attestation and potentially verifiable on chain, where the source code that you expect is running is actually running. Many more challenges, unfortunately, I don't have time to go through them, but we are building in public. All the challenges, all the discussion, all the ideas that, are, um, that I'm presenting are available on GitHub. So uh, go read the code if you're interested and join the conversations. We built this tech for games. It's now being used for creating perpetual exchange, so consumer apps, social fight, deep in, and many more. We're just getting started, and it's time to accelerate. Thank you. <laughs>